May 12th Special School Board Meeting of Independent School District 709. Clerk Lefter County, please call the roll. Chair Harlock, here. Member Johnston, here. Member Kirby, here. Member Oswell, here. Member Sandstead, here. Member Welby, here. Superintendent Grossett, here. Deputy Clerk Bill Hansen, here. And uh, Secretary Belinda Kegel, here. And our student reps are excused. Thank you, sir. Now I'll move for um, a motion to approve the agenda. Uh, the question I have is, which agenda are we talking about? Are we talking about the one that was submitted by uh, the uh, three school board members? If that's the case, I would like to uh, move that we adopt the, uh, the agenda that was sent out for a special meeting by the three members who called this meeting. Member Wilty, as it was publicly posted with this, you will always amend the agenda because it was it was posted in such a way that you would like to amend the agenda to over to to substitute it for. I wouldn't move that uh, we substitute the, uh, the agenda that was published with the one that the uh, three board members uh, sent out with its 10 points. There's been a movement by Member Welty. Second. Seconded by Member Oswald. Any discussion? Member Welty? Yes, I don't know if this is controversial. I, uh, well, I, I rather thought it was. Um, I do not know what the uh, majority from before has decided, but I do believe that having uh, uh, ignored the uh, the uh, uh, agenda that we sent out in the call was uh, not an act of good faith, and I'm certainly hoping that the votes of the school board will adopt one that we sent out in an act of good faith. Johnson. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I was actually quite surprised. Uh, we follow Minnesota Statute 123B.09, Subdivision 6, which allows three school board members to uh, call a special meeting. And we did that. We did that in a proper manner. Yet I was surprised to see the next day that. You as chair apparently sent out another agenda, which uh, was not in our call. Uh, in our call also, okay, we also had two motions in our call. The results were given in that call. And you did not even include the two motions that we properly submitted uh, to this board to be part, part of this meeting. So I guess I'm very surprised on why you did that. And I've gotten legal advice. And, and, Heard and for us to reach a final decision. Number one, 
We're having queuing issues, and so I will just make sure I saw that you were Okay. I actually, it was I had two things. First, a point of personal privilege or point of information. I was wondering if there was something that happened because I had not been able to get the the uh, the, uh, the light going unless I put my finger down. But I guess we're all having trouble with that. Thank you, Chair Harper. Um, yes, I have a reaction to that. Um, I've talked about this being a matter of uh, of uh, well, just fair dealing. Um, the statute clearly says that three board members of the city council, um, uh, county board, school board, have the right to call any. The um, topic of the meeting is, is, is the critical issue. The, the issue that we have is primarily the uh, resolution that was, was uh, submitted, resolution B-5-16-3364, dated May 2nd, 2016. That is what the meeting was called for, to uh, have uh, the school board alter our call uh, completely violates the call that, that we made and, and certainly would not be an act of good faith. Uh, I will note that uh, I was advised by uh, an administrator not long ago that uh, we had not abided by the state statute because we had to uh, get the call out three days before uh, the meeting that they had to be business days. Uh, I pointed out that, that that was not addressed in the statute and that was that was uh, quickly a countermand. Uh, so I am distressed that we are faced with a second attempt <coughs> And I judge by Member Sandstead's comments that uh, we will not get the good faith vote, or are very likely not to get the good faith vote that will allow our original call to stand. But if it does not stand, what it tells me, and it will tell the community, is that when three members of the board exercise their rights under the state statute to call a meeting about an interest of their concern, the majority of the school board believes they can subvert the state statute's intent to elect that three-member minority call a meeting for the purposes that they wish to discuss. I will also note that in the alternate call, or the alternate agenda, you have provided a, a uh, you provided a motion which, under the interpretation evidently of the, of the chair of the school board, is, is one that we have no right to, uh, to bring forth because in your, or in the understanding of the chair, a vote to reconsider something can only be brought by somebody who voted on the prevailing side. Well, first of all, there is a parliamentary reason why that interpretation, if that is the one you choose to use, completely violates Robert's rules of orders. And since Member Sandstead recently, or just, just a moment ago, talked about what our policies say, our policies say that we are to adhere to Robert's rules of order. So apparently, uh, we have a policy that contradicts another policy, a policy as, as our new member Sandstead chooses to interpret it that gives the chairman only the right to set the agenda and a policy which says that the, the, uh, the method by which we are about to be advised we have to operate is in violation of Robert's Rules of Order, which is the order that we operate under by policy. Um, but this seems like a very silly and petty disagreement to have. We're talking about a, a matter of good faith and it was one of the things that was supposed to inaugurate this new school board in January when we were all seated. One in which there would be transparency. There has been nothing transparent about the development of a, a meeting that apparently violates the spirit of our policy and the spirit of the state law. And you put the minority in a position to have to decide whether or not this violation of transparency and the spirit of transparency that we began under at the beginning of this school term is something that we should take 
to uh, some higher authority. Well, as you well know, we went to a higher authority, a judicial authority, over another issue that uh, apparently the board had not thoroughly researched. And, and for a full year, it brought nothing but infamy to the reputation of the Duluth School Board. I, I fail to see how such a brutal and high-handed dismissal of the rights of the minority to call a meeting under the state statute in any way improves the condition of the school board or our reputation as a whole. So I would implore the members of this school board to allow this minority to operate as the spirit of the statute indicates we should and allow our original call and agenda to become the, the, the bare bones of this meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Member Welty. You're absolutely well said. Do minority members, three minority members are absolutely in, uh, within the right to call, to call the meeting, and you did move the, your wish, wish to do this, and, and so neither of us have indicated either way, but I think it's, it's important that the posted meeting is what we need. Yeah. 
confident that the board will not change their mind given the new information that we want to present today. All the board majority has to do is vote uh, for that, for three, and it will either uh, not be adopted or will be adopted depending on what motion we're going to have. So for the chair to go through and to do a power trip, very questionable power trip, which certainly shows extreme bad faith. And I think that this unfortunately will continue the angst that this board has given this community will also, uh, and I think that's very unfortunate. So for those reasons, I would certainly hope that uh, the majority of the board here will adopt our resolution, our agenda, our call, which was properly submitted. And I would also like to say that you mentioned that you got advice from the Minnesota so uh, School Board Association. I think that uh, you know as well as me that there is no parliamentarians in the Minnesota School Board Association. Uh, in fact, I've got the list of the parliamentarians in all of Minnesota that are both registered and professional. And not one person in the Minnesota School Board Association I'm aware of is a member of the National Association of Parliamentarians. So your advice that you got was wrong. And I would hope that you as a chair would do some research and instead of trying to uh, manipulate the system uh, to uh, for whatever it means, I have no idea if you have the majority, you have the majority. But why you want to manipulate the system to change uh, what we gave it as a legal call is really beyond, almost beyond believable. And with the uh, advice that you got, which was extremely poor, I would like to say, if this does not get accepted, we go to what you put out. This is a motion to uh, substitute our call. Uh, we will talk at that point about that. Uh, the, what you're calling reconsideration is a moot point. Reconsideration is not a correct scenario from parliamentary view. Uh, re reconsideration is not, cannot even come up at this point. So for you to put something called a reconsideration on, on the agenda, that is a violation right there of Robert's Rules of Order. It certainly could have done much else. For example, taking our call and just voting it down when we get to it. Thank you. I'm looking forward to hearing the rule of the board on this. Member Welty. Yes, uh, Chair Harlow, I too am interested in hearing the will of the, uh, of the majority. Um, however, having heard one member poo-poo uh, the state statute upon which we base this, and having seen the alteration of our call by the chair, uh, what I originally was hopeful for may, it seems to be more remote at this point. And uh, it leads me to say a few things that I hope uh, will prove that, I, that I, I wish I wouldn't have to say them, but I, I think because I... Yes. Um, We're saving this. Yeah. Is that what we're doing here? Is there a motion from the, or an amendment from the 
Uh, right now we have a motion on the floor, I believe, to uh, to go with the original the original call and agenda. That is Never what we're discussing now. Uh, we do have a member. We do have a motion on the floor to do this, but we can amend the motion. There can be an amendment of a motion that is on the floor. Correct. Member Welty. Yes. Then in that case, uh, I would take. Uh, I would ask that. Did I have a second for that that motion? I, there's a member Welty. You, you okay. uh, then, then what I will do is, is I will ask for the uh, the. Uh, the seconder to go along with what I would consider a friendly amendment that we just simply drop item three uh, on the uh, on the uh, original call, which would require a presentation by the superintendent or the administration, so that we would have nine air, uh, nine items. Uh, so I I move that we, we drop item three from that agenda. Or actually, okay? if, if no one objects, I will just simply withdraw it from the seconder. Goes along with that. It is no longer part of the agenda. Or the, the no longer part of the call, you would you would accept it. So now we have a new a new part of our motion is basically changed so that we no longer require a presentation by the administration. That is our current motion to eliminate that. And the well, was accepted. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, members, there's been a motion and a second on the floor now amended or uh, that has been uh, updated to remove number three and move to that. So it will be. The order of the meeting would be call for order roll call, receiving a public comment, a resolution with regard to executive closed session, a uh, recess to executive closed session and convene at the school board meeting, questions and comments by the school board concerning potential sale and resolution and adjournment. Any discussion? Member Stansted? I would call the question. Let's get to it. Question has been called. All those in favor of changing the agenda? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 and 0. We will now move to, um, to receiving public comments related to the property and disposal of Central High School, SDC site 800 is Central Entrance. My first uh, speaker is Clay Oden. Uh, I'll just just give one moment to say, mem uh, members of the audience, we ask for civility. We, do, um, we will report that as we've seen a solid discussion just now, and we're in good faith in acting with one another. So we're in, in accordance with that. Uh, we welcome public comment. We're glad that we have a number of people from the from the community that are here, and all, um, many that feel very passionate on these issues. And so we ask for civility, and um, and that we we honor our community. We have a three minute limit. Uh, to speaking, and I know that we do have a number of people, so we will be honoring that. Uh, Clerk Leffler can will turn on our this system, and while and uh, when there's one minute left, the light will come up, and then we will um, see a red light when that is, and we will have to ask people to finish their comments when they're done in three minutes. So thank you for standing for a moment, and Madam Chair, may please board. My name is Clay Otten. Uh, I've lived in Duluth most of my life. My children went to public schools here in Duluth. Have a lot of friends uh, in and outside of the school district, some of which are here tonight. Participated in, in programs with the school district. I'm a retired uh, county attorney, and I served in the county attorney's office for 30 years prior to my retirement. As an aside, I think you all could use a county attorney once in a while up there. Uh, I came. I came tonight in support of Mr. Welty's uh, resolution. I was originally a supporter of the Red Plan until the debacle started to occur. In fact, I think that Mr. Westholm might have talked me into that originally. At any rate, I don't claim to come to this board and advise you on school district financial. I know nothing about them. However, as I mentioned, I was in a, a county attorney for 30 years. And what I do know, from what, I, from what I've read anyway, is that there's a serious disconnect between this board and the community. Serious in that, if you really believe that you can ignore an offer for 
with $14.2 million and treat it like chunk change and think that the taxpayers and the people that have otherwise supported the school district are going to be happy with that, you're wrong. If you think that the community is going to support a stated reason for doing so and that you choose not to or you don't want to communicate or compete with charter schools, that's a mistake and it is not supported by the community or anyone that I know in it. In addition, you should know that it, that it seems like you ignore the community's responses to the issues, not only when, when you were in the past executing certain parts of the red plan, but since you have come to try to execute the, the final part of the red plan in, in selling or disposing of unneeded buildings and property otherwise owned by the district. To ignore an offer of $14.2 million, to treat it so poorly is irrational, number one. And number two, it also ignores the ongoing expenses of, keep up, of, of maintaining Central High School. Mike, is that my red light? I was afraid of that. <coughs> Please, acknowledge most of the people in this room are here to advise you along the lines or to explain you along the lines that I have. I hope you listen to them because if you come to these taxpayers, if you come to the people, most of the people in this room with levy requests in the future, I, for the first one, not only will not support that, won't vote for it, and it'll be the first time in my life ever that I've done that, and I will not. And I and, and I hope that everybody in this room keeps track of what you do and you don't do with the money entrusted to you because you're not doing the right thing right now. Thank you. Sorry for coming.